Let's welcome my guest, Nina Fahim, here at LSI 2022. Thanks for coming by. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Thanks for having me. It's uh, great to be here. So what brings you out to the conference this year? It's time for the world to know what Mediview is doing. And uh, we are a med tech startup that comes out of Cleveland. Um, we are giving clinicians x-ray vision for surgery. And we up to this point um, have been extremely well funded with an amazing group out of Ohio. We've raised $14.5 million to date, all pre-Series A. We just closed a $9.9 .9 million round. Thanks to some amazing work by one of our co-founders, Adam Rakestraw. And uh, it really is put us in a position where we're going to bring some transformative technology to the bedside and really start helping patients get the minimally invasive procedures that they deserve instead of having to settle for more harsh and invasive procedures, starting with cancer care. So how is Mediview changing the way that cancer treatments are applied? Imagine if a cancer patient didn't have to have chemotherapy. Imagine if they didn't have to cut your body open and cut a piece of your intestine out. Imagine if a clinician could take a needle, put it in your stomach and kill the cancer with extreme heat or extreme cold. Today, only 24% of eligible patients get those more minimally invasive and less harsh procedures. That means about 75% of patients have to settle for more harsh, more invasive procedures that lead to a de deteriorated quality of life and a longer recovery time. So our goal and is to help clinicians with x-ray vision to simplify getting that tool to that target safely, efficiently, and predictably. And that's really what we're hoping to do is get more patients easier and simpler care. Minimally invasive x-ray vision, microscopic tools. <laughs> this sounds like science fiction. It's How like are you doing this? <laughs> What's the technology that you're bringing to bear to this problem? How is this happening? Yeah, I mean, a, a huge shout out really to uh, Dr. Jeff Yanoff and Carl West of the Cleveland Clinic, where this technology was incubated and it's been being developed for uh, since 2014. And it's now at the point where we're about to deliver it to the FDA for submission and clearance. And this idea is that you can take a scan of the patient-specific organs, reconstruct them as a hologram, and then project them into the real world. So imagine you are able to reach into a screen like Jarvis and Iron Man, pull that CT out, and put it in the real world to a couple millimeters of accuracy. That is MediView. That is fantastic. That sounds like you've got a lot of imaging technology going on. Do you got anybody helping you on that side of it? We are extremely blessed to have GE Healthcare as a strategic development partner. And you know they are the world's biggest medical device imaging company. And their partnership has allowed us to go from doing a lot of things on our own to where now we're extending what makes MediView unique into an install base that we're starting out locally in Ohio and really growing an epicenter of focus there and then starting to grow you know, from that nucleus outward. And we'll start out in Ohio, we'll expand to the Midwest, we'll expand beyond that. And someday we know that this technology is gonna have a global reach. So GE's been incredible starting on the ultrasound side. Um, and there's some more exciting things coming down the pipe that can't talk about yet today, but. Maybe LSI 23 will have this discussion. We hear so much about, I'm up in Silicon Valley, so we clearly we hear about that. We're down here near LA. We hear a lot about Boston. I'm excited to hear about what's happening in Ohio. Can you tell us more about maybe some of your partners there or some of the areas where you've had some early wins, maybe into your, your clinical work that you've done to submit to FDA? Where, where has that been happening? So I'm a little biased because I come from Minnesota and Mayo Clinic's there. so. Cleveland Clinic is, uh, no, I mean, it's amazing when you've got one of the world's top healthcare institutions with an incredible clinician like Dr. Charles Martin. He's the Associate Director of Interventional Radiology and Oncology, um, that you get an incredible clinician champion. And, you know, we've got a lot of confidence in the solution we've built, but we're also humbled to know that it's the voice of the clinician that's going to drive adoption. And 
when you have a clinician like Dr. Martin, who's passionate about what we're doing, who wants to use it, understands the technology, and advocates for its use with patients at an institution like the Cleveland Clinic, you can't ask for any more than that. Um, so we've done up to this point um, just around 20 inhuman procedures that have allowed us to assess the technology in the real world and not just on the bench top. And really having that capability with a world-class institution, with a world-class clinician, is really what's gonna drive the adoption of clinical mixed reality. So do you have any idea, um, even from the limited study that you've done so far, like how many of these did they dodge the chemo route or they would have to have done like a major resection procedure? Do you have any idea about how much, what you've actually already accomplished for those, those patients? So I'll put my regulatory disclaimer on so my regulatory guy doesn't kill me. Um, so none of this has been validated by the FDA. Um, it's, we're working on the submission. So all those caveats that um, because they can't use the MediView solution yet as the primary tool for intervention, we have to use it in what's called a human evaluation alongside the standard of care. Now, having said that, we have done comparisons with right now the standard of care in regards to targeting to avoid hitting other structures mm -hmm. and time to finding the tumor under the ultrasound. And in these primary two areas around safer procedures and data around, hey, I'm not gonna nick a vein on my way to the tumor. Or you know what, instead of it taking me 10 minutes to find the tumor under ultrasound, I find it in 10 seconds, right? So these trends towards procedural efficiency, procedural safety that are all parts of achieving efficacy, we're starting to have some really exciting early indicators. And we just had a peer reviewed publication in the Journal of Vascular Interventional Radiology, which is the world's biggest peer reviewed uh, journal for interventional radiology. Oh, that journal. That journal. So <laughs> we're, uh, and, uh, and, and it's, it's incredible because the team's work is starting to be noticed. It's our second publication in JVIR um, and we'll be presenting at a couple upcoming conferences on the latest data showing time efficiency, safety, and better planning for procedures. You know, even setting aside uh, the benefits of having, you know, tighter placement and smaller resection areas, what you've already said, just think about how many, um, you know, just the OR planning department, all of a sudden you've lost that time, less time under anesthesia, less time in the space, less anxiety for the, the physician to get in, identify, I mean, already just that piece, that efficiency, that already sounds like you've got to win. You, you nailed it. And we really think a lot about the various stakeholders in the ecosystem. I and mean, let's, let's be honest, right? We're asking clinicians to put an augmented reality headset on their head and perform surgery, right? We're, there's a tall order for adoption here. And when you think about the administrative stakeholders and you hear them saying, if you can even shift five minutes of intraoperative time to preoperative time in the US, every minute of OR time yes. is north of $100 a minute. So now think about saving incrementally a couple minutes at a time where now you actually get to fit another procedure into the day, Yes. another two procedures into the day. And not just that, now you start enabling more clinicians to be confident to do these type of procedures. And that's a huge thing. It's one of the rate limiting factors. Again, why less than three out of every 10 patients get this minimally invasive procedure as clinician confidence. We are giving them that. That's terrific. It seems like you're, um, it's one of the, an enabler for like a whole new breed of surgeon, particularly in cancer, which is so non-descriptive, right? Just pick the organ, pick the clinical case, there's a form of cancer and it probably has five variants. Yeah. It's a massive, massive beachhead that we've barely even got anybody, any boots on the ground. And I, and I love that you said that it's our beachhead because it can be the liver, it can be the kidney, it can be the spine. And that really is our beachhead for what we call our XR90 surgical navigation platform. But that's exactly what it is, it's a platform. And once we achieve it for cancer, now you start opening up the world to cardiac. You start opening it up to neuro. You start opening it up to spine. So we really wanna demonstrate 
benefit with this first iteration of the solution so that future applications really get adopted and opened up. Mina, thanks for coming by and sharing this great update with me. No, I appreciate it. Thanks for the time and thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure. Yeah.